Welcome to One Million Cups. Uh, we got a good crowd here today. Uh, One Million Cups, if I see some new faces, so I'll kind of go over it again. Uh, it's a Kauffman Foundation initiative, and the whole idea behind One Million Cups is that if we uh, in our community share One Million Cups with each other and discuss entrepreneurs, or entrepreneurs and help them on their journey, then we can in turn advance our local economy through entrepreneurship. And uh, before we really get going, uh, Jessica has an announcement to make, an exciting announcement about some Venture Center stuff. Yeah, okay, it is it is very exciting. So I need Ashley and Andrew. So just really quick, for those of you that have been coming for a while, you, you may not know this, that we've not always had a lovely individual up at the front to welcome you as you come through the door. Now we do. It's Andrew. Yeah, um, also Andrew. So this is Ashley Jones. She's going to be here in the mornings welcoming everybody here. And if you enjoy coffee, you should say thank you to Ashley because she, see, just for you, right? And then Andrew Lewis is our new hacker in residence. We've been getting some uh, kind of amusing calls about whether or not that's a real thing, right? Because his business card says hacker in residence and it's freaking some people out. Yes. Anyhow, so that makes it even more fun. So he's real and he's here. And if you have any questions about how you become a hacker in residence, you can talk to this guy. Yeah. So anyhow, Ashley and Andrew just wanted to introduce them. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Let's give them a round of applause. New members, new members on the squad is always fun. So this is exciting. I know I, I've, I've known a few of these presenters, but uh, I think Matt, of all the presenters, I may have known Matt for one of the longest. Uh, this is Matt and Hayden. Um, you know, Matt's one of those guys uh, that kind of just gets the whole entrepreneurial thing. Um, you know, I, me and him first met during the Arc Challenge, which was actually held in this facility like circa 2014, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Learned a lot, um, and uh, the whole time he was doing that business through the Art Challenge, he had this side business on going on that was and is still successful. And I believe there was another business too, about I think a donut shop. So true entrepreneur here. Uh, really excited to hear his story. It's a really interesting concept. So um, without any further ado, here's Matt and Hayden and Lone Star Hog. Boom boom. Thank you, Spencer. Appreciate that. We are Lone Star Hog, and it is awesome to be back in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, love this team, this crew that you have organizing it. I, you know, big fan of Jordan Carlisle, but this is like a dream team. And uh, if you guys don't know, they're also prolific pranksters. Um, Iana Mitchell, especially. So last Tuesday, I'm just hanging out, minding my own business, and I get an email from Iana. It says, just checking in with you about tomorrow morning. This is last Tuesday, making me think that I'm pitch that I'm talking to you guys last Wednesday, and I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get down to Little Rock by tomorrow. I have to find somebody to ship the orders, and I'm calling Hayden. He's like, you're an idiot. You messed up the dates. I can't believe you. And then she's like, oh, I just checked in. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. And I was like, oh yeah, thank God. I was so panicked. You're just playing it cool. I was gonna come down and act like nothing was the matter at all. But no, I love you guys. You got me good. Um, but yeah, we are Lone Star Hog. This is my co-founder, Hayden. We started this in 2013, and he's going to tell us what we are. Yeah, so my name is Hayden Short. Like I said, um, had the privilege. Well, first of all, thank you for having us here. I've only been to Little Rock once before this, and it was actually to visit him during the Arc Challenge in this building when it looked a lot different. So I'm glad to be back. Um, so yeah, I had the privilege of knowing Matt through, uh, through one of our fraternities, and so that friendship sparked this. So who we are, we're Lone Star Hog, and we're an identity brand for Texan Razorbacks. So as opposed to brands like Lauren James, or uh, like you see here, or, or Fayette Chill, we're not someone who you go to our website and you see, oh, these are the outdoorsy people, or oh, these are the preppy people on yachts. You know, we're like, it, like if you're from Texas and you go to the University of Arkansas, we want you to wear our stuff. Doesn't matter what your lifestyle is. So we're kind of unique in, in that sense. Um, but yeah, I think so. So Matt's going to kind of tell you, um, kind of moving forward, how we got this thing rolling and, and things like that. Oh yeah, well, while we're moving on here. So this is kind of like perfect example. We are, One of our bigger target markets is just the students that are here. So um, these are people getting their acceptance letters. And so we have a lot of these pictures turned into us. Um, yeah, we, <laughs> these are really goofy pictures actually. Okay, so they're like a Sadie Hawkins dance, if y'all are familiar um, with that, where the girls ask the guys. It's always a surprise, you know. Um, but this is like, so people were like asking other people via like using our brand to do that, which is just hilarious. And like, it's not a lifestyle thing at all. It's just people in Texas who are coming here 
Um, these are our flags that we gave away for spring break, and they went like all over the world. I mean, they've been to the North Pole, South America, um, beaches, mountains, Peru, um, where Machu Picchu is, and everything like that. And uh, that's just from people liking our brand and identifying with who we are, but and kind of molding it to their lifestyle. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hand it over to Matt, and he's going to tell you how how we made this thing happen. Yeah, so that's a key point. We are not a lifestyle brand. You know, our customers don't look like any um, specific thing. We're not going for a specific look. Um, if you are from Texas and attend the University of Arkansas, which is almost 50% of the student population now, uh, we want you to buy our gear. Um, we want to uh, give you an identity on campus. So that's what we do. Um, and thinking back to when I was coming to these regularly when I was in the Arc Challenge, I liked the talks that kind of gave me a roadmap to how to replicate success. Um, so that's what we're going to try and do, just to give you a quick run through of if you want to start up um, something like this on the side and have it grow, um, here's what we did and, you know, some quick action items to make it happen. Um, and, you know, we are not some huge deal, you know, we're not scaling massively and venture funds aren't calling us up and just be like, you know what we need? We need the Texan Razorback brand in our portfolio. No, that's not what we're doing. But what we are is a $250,000 revenue business a year. We don't have any mandatory hours. We're all e-commerce and we have a lot of fun on a daily basis. So like if you want to do that type of thing in e-commerce and feel, you know, you think of those things and you're like, yeah, why not? Um, I'd love to do this stuff. Uh, then here's what we found works best. Step one, go Greek. Um, well, or anything, just mainly put yourself out there. For Hayden and I, um, neither one of us thought that we'd join a fraternity. It was really an un kind of uncomfortable idea for us, but it forced us out of our comfort zones and to uh, meet other people. So this uh, freshman came to Fayetteville when I was a senior, and he kept talking about Texas, 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 and uh, he ha hatched this idea um, to combine the Razorback logo and the Texan flag and, you know, sell t-shirts to it. And uh, I had met him just kind of through the fraternity. And the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what, that's a good idea. Um, so that's a real lesson. Um, I didn't have this idea. I just got connected with him because I put myself out there repeatedly, met some people. So you don't have to have a killer idea. Um, you just have to know somebody who has a killer idea. That's what I did with Hayden. So <laughs> put yourself out there. Step two, uh, go do it. Um, don't be afraid to throw your idea out there. Um, you know, it's highly unlikely that any of our ideas are going to be the next Facebook. You know, we don't need a non-disclosure agreement. Um, you know, nobody's going to take your idea. You know, just throw it out there and let the community of ideas, you know, places like this, give you feedback. And uh, that's what we did. We came up with a design and we tweeted it out, you know, got reached out to like 500 different people. And lo and behold, Brett Bielema, uh, Razorback football coach saw it, liked it, tweeted it out. We got a couple hundred retweets off of that, and we we're like, "Boom! Market validation. You know, let's do this thing." And that led us to step three: remind yourself that this is America, and remind yourself of that frequently. So we had this market validation. Coach Bielema liked it. All these people were talking about Texan and Razorbacks, and we're like, "Okay, let's do this." Um, we start building a website, and we have no idea how to build a website. And we're like plogging through this code and it's a horrible experience. We're going to hire a web designer and that was a whole other ordeal. And he essentially runs off with our money. And we're like, gosh, there has to be an easier way. And sure enough, there was. I came across Shopify, like an oasis in the desert. And <laughs> they handle the whole backbone. All, literally, all you have to do is upload photos and then write words about the photos, which are your products. Like that's all you have to do to make an e-commerce shop. And it was insanely easy. So we get our we get our shop up there, and uh, we're printing all these shirts. Hard to see over there, but you can see it on that. That's our first run of shirts ever. We get a hundred orders in, and so it's going well. We have a hundred orders, and then we realize, shoot, we are hopeless millennials who can't take care of ourselves. Like we've never even been in a post office before. We've never mailed a letter. Like my dad was the one that always mailed my thank you cards for birthdays and whatever. So we're we're struggling to figure out how to get these to customers across the country. We're online, like manually entering the addresses and taking us hours and hours and walking into Office Depot, seeing if they can help us ship things. Um, and then I thought, hey, this is America. There, you know, somebody has thought of a way to make money solving this problem. Sure enough, ShipStation. 
<laughs> one Google search. That's all it took. Um, they import all your orders directly from Shopify. They create the labels. They find the cheapest way to get it there. And then you just hit print and they just come off the line and you attach them to the package. It was like so easy. So easy. So if whenever you're like banging your head against the wall, thing like I can't solve this problem, remind yourself this is America. Someone has solved your problem already because they want to make money off of you and make your life easier. Step four, uh, realize that word of mouth is BS. Like word of mouth is really powerful and impactful and what you know, but that doesn't need any real explanation. Um, but customers can only spend money at your store on your product if they know about you. Like I've been to a ton of awesome restaurants and then I go back three months later and it's closed down. Like not because it was a sucky restaurant, but because nobody knew about it. Um, so that's what you got to realize that you're going to have to spend money, uh, a lot of money on marketing to get the ball rolling, which hurts at first because um, it feels like, like, oh, I put in all this work into making this product and building this website. People should just be showing up and buying it because I worked hard. Um, like, no, you're going to have to take a margin hit uh, but once you get rolling, um, it's easy and fun. So this is our ad, our actual AdWords account. Um, we're like, hey, what if every time somebody searched Razorbacks, Arkansas football, whatever, in the state of Texas, they came directly to us? Um, and we just got better and better at it. You know, we threw away the first thousand dollars, and then we kind of made something on the next thousand dollars. And by our third thousand dollars, we were actually really good at targeting the right types of people. Um, and Facebook was even easier. This was our first ad that we hit success with. Um, we just had this great photo of one of our flags, pretty girl. And we put it into the Facebook ad uh, manager, ran an ad. And Mark Zuckerberg, using what I can only imagine are wizards, turned our $500 into $6,000. Um, and that's why he's a billionaire. Um, he's figured out a way to make that happen. We didn't do anything. You know, we're not like, super genius dudes. Um, we just took a good photo and then spent $500 on Facebook, and that's essentially it. I'm, I'm simplifying this a little bit, and we've gotten you know more complicated and advanced than that, but if you have an idea, you have a product, you're going to market it, this is really easy. Just try it. You know, Save up a spare 500 to 1000 bucks in your business and make it happen. Um, and once you have customers in the door, uh, make an email list. And if you have a business right now and you don't have an email list that you're like active with, then like when you're driving home, you roll down the window and just throw cash out the window because that's essentially what you're doing. Um, this is the easiest, most fun way to make money. Uh, we have a really active email list. We have a 40% open rate and a 7% click rate for free. Like we don't spend any cash on this. Um, and we essentially did it just by having fun and making people laugh. Uh, for we had a huge winter inventory because we thought there was going to be a ton of snow in uh, our snowmageddon, um, and it didn't snow never came, so we had all these long sleeve shirts and sweatshirts. So we called it uh, the global warming sale, global warming winter clearance, and we had Al Gore graphics everywhere. It, it was just a lot of fun, um, and so that's the that's step five is have fun with it. Like one, so you can get up every day, um, and if this is a side business at first. If it's fun, then it becomes like a hobby and you want to do it. Um, and that's what helps you turn it into a full-time job like what we do now. And most importantly, customers can tell if you have fun. Like I would much rather make a customer laugh and then you know, kind of remind them, hey, I'm selling product as well. Because uh, that makes an emotional, um, way better connection. So some ways we do that, we troll opposing fan bases before and after football games. Uh, we'll take out ads in College Station, Oxford, Tuscaloosa, wherever, and uh, the opposing fan bases will get really angry, and our customers love us for it. They love it. You know, we've had people say, I continue to buy your shirts just so you can afford um, to troll Alabama. <laughs> Not really. Really, though. Like, who else does that? Nobody. Um, so after Alabama won the national championship, here's a Facebook ad that we targeted in Tuscaloosa. Um, this is the play that knocked Ole Miss out and Alabama into the playoff, making the championship possible. So we said, hey, Alabama football, you're welcome. And this is just like a $50 ad. It got 100, 178 shares, 800 likes. Um, it was just fun and made people laugh, and that's why it got shared so much. Um, we had a blog post uh, talking about uh, who was worst drivers, Texans or Arkansans. And so in... 
uh, in Texas, we promoted this quote, our Kansas view Texan drivers as reckless maniacs with no regard for traffic laws or the sanctity of life. And all the Texan people are like, oh, heck no, no, I'm going to go tell them peace of my mind. And then in Arkansas, we promoted this quote, Texans view Arkansan drivers as indecisive turtles who couldn't navigate their own neighborhood without GPS. And all the Arkansans are like, oh, hell no, let's fight. And so they show up on our website and they're duking it out. Everybody's kind of laughing at each other. And then we all decide that Oklahoma is actually the worst. Um, <laughs> but it was just a fun time. And uh, it got some little bit of press play, got people talking um, just by making people laugh. So have fun with it. Um, and that actually made us a fair amount of money. People get, came to the site and then they ended up buying product. Um, so here are some comments from that. Southeast Texans drive like blind doors in a NASCAR race with no traffic laws. I think they get all that metropolitan congestion. They're like, freedom, meow. And uh, yeah, so if, you know, if your customers are having fun, you can tell it's fun for you as well. Um, Hayden's going to do a little bit run through of uh, where we're headed, and then we can open it up to questions. Yeah, so just the last uh, couple of things. So where we're headed is we've kind of wanted to expand to other colleges as well um, because Texans travel to other places and let you know that they're Texans um, just because that's our nature because, I don't know, that's who we are. Uh, so there's a lot of us uh, Texans, you know, at the University of Oklahoma, uh, Louisiana State, Alabama, places like that. And so we actually have contacts to all these schools to try to make a similar type of situation happen at these schools. So we're expanding in places like that and other designs that aren't necessarily – so focused on Razorbacks, you know, things like that. Um, so yeah, our expansion is, is, is fun and we're looking forward to it. And then I, I guess like the last part of our presentation that I, I guess I'll say um, is that, you know, not a lot of people in the room here are college students. I, I think I might actually be the only one right now. Um, but yeah, so uh, basically what I want to say is that a lot of younger people, um, and we're, we're all pretty young, but you know, even college age students, yeah, we're really stupid and we do a lot of dumb things and like admittedly like we do that, you know um, But don't be afraid to take chances on those kids because they're the same ones who are like hungry enough To go out and pursue things that that they want to succeed in life and it's funny like With our generation. I almost feel like a lot of us are excited to fail even like which sounds weird, you know But like I get up in the morning and like I'm excited to kind of suck at something because maybe I'll be better for it in the long run, you know um, and like I suck at a lot of things, so you know, hopefully I'll be better in the long run. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we're hungry and we're excited to, to do things um, to make the world a better place, make people laugh, and to grow the business community here in Arkansas, Texas, and, and all over. You just got to take a chance on us sometimes, and, and I think that, that a lot of people are, and we're really excited for that. So um, yeah, that being said, just thank you so much for having us. And yeah, we'll answer Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah, give them a round of applause real quick. So. We'll open it up for questions. I have one kind of to start with. Can you talk a little bit? So the Razorback is, uh, can you talk about the trademark? Because that, that was kind of one of the first sure. things I thought uh, and how you kind of navigated through that. Yeah. Um, I'll leave that one up. Uh, yeah, so we, we can talk about whatever. I can talk about licensing, e-commerce, shipping, whatever you want to talk about. I just don't want to bore anybody who doesn't want to hear about something that matters. But so essentially, there are two processes. Um, the Razorback is owned by the University of Arkansas, so we have to get any usage approved by them. Then they send it into the NCAA. Once it's approved by them, uh, then we can print it and we pay 12%. And it's a long bureaucratic slog, but you know we're using the Razorback likeness, so we want to make sure it's faithful to their brand. And we're expanding their brand into Texas, so that's why they let us do it. Yeah, and like uh, you know, a big part of that, and a part of like. Um, you know, just going, like he said, just go for it is like one day I had to just wake up and be like, wow, I'm going to have to make a lot of phone calls over the course of the next few months. And like, that's going to be a huge learning process. But if we wanted to succeed, you just have to do that. And like, it was painful. Like it, it a lot of the times it was like, wow, I'm going to have to call like eight people today and it's just going to leave me in a circle. I'm going to get nowhere. But eventually you do get somewhere. So. Oh, sorry. I got it. <laughs> sorry. I Hey guys, Mike with Sparkable. Um, and first off, you know, this congrats. Anytime you can uh, taunt opposing fan bases, I'm all for it. So, uh, the so could you talk a little bit because in this day and age, so much of the focus is just on the startup, on the you know, on the exit, and all these kind of things. Uh, starting a lifestyle business is not bad. Can you talk about kind of you know 
what your expectations were as you started and now how this decision is kind of happening, you know, that you're going to expand out and grow. I mean, yeah, well, I could talk about uh, expectations when I was like 15, back when entrepreneurship was first like getting cool. I'm like, yeah, by 25, I'm definitely going to be a billionaire. Definitely going to live in San Fran. Definitely would have sold three companies, raised millions of dollars. Um, and like, I kind of pursued that with the arc. You know, we had a, it was great. We grew a lot. Um, but I found out I actually liked like making money daily. Um, so yeah, there are lots of businesses out there, just like Lone Star Hawk, where there's a, there's a market, you sell them a product and you get to grow it and have fun. Um, it's just a different way. Just focus on revenue generation, profit margin, um, instead of user growth. Like they're similar, um, but one you can actually live off of and not have to constantly raise money. Yeah, and, and I would say uh, my expectation when I started this company in, I guess, August of 2013 was absolutely nothing because I didn't even know I was starting a company. I had just made this, you know, the that, that right there, and then people start begging for it on clothes and stuff, and I'm like, I have no clue what I'm doing. Um, so expectations were, like, lower than the floor, um, and your expectations rise as time goes on, and you realize, like, what you're capable of and things like that, and you realize, like, we're not like all the tech startups and things like that. Like we're here having fun doing what we do. So can you talk a little bit about, I know there's a huge alumni base in Texas that went to Arkansas, moved back. Uh, can you talk about how you've gone after them, if you've gone after them and if it's been successful? Networking. Absolutely. Um, so we got in tight with the alumni association and essentially we walked in and we're like, Hey, how can we help you? And like, clearly there's going to be an ask at the end of all of it. Um, but we gave them gear to give away to their alumni. We helped them sign up students to join the alumni association, uh, do all of this stuff. And eventually um, they said, hey, we'd love to do a Texas Independence Day celebration for you guys. So March 2nd is kind of like the 4th of July, but for Texas, um, when they declared in independence from Mexico. And so on the University of Arkansas campus of this March, there was a Texas Independence Day celebration with George Strait and Texas Country Music played on the Student Union. And we got to email the entire Arkansas alumni, Arkansas alumni email list and pull them in. So really, it was just laying the groundwork of a mutual beneficial relationship. And then they gave us access to all of their alumni, which was incredible. So well, do, we, the, do we have any other questions? Any other questions? One over here. Okay. Hey, Jordan King. Um, I'm curious, you talked about having some obstacles when you hired a designer initially. Have you guys had to get a designer on the team now that you guys have grown? And what what advice can you guys give us for avoiding those kind of issues? A uh, web designer? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we became the web designers because of an awesome platform like Shopify, which was great. What we realized is that for a brand like we have, so if you follow Fit Chill, you see that they're constantly running different ads, constantly doing different things. So we realized as a clothing company, we need to do similar things. And it's really hard to depend on one college student who was a sophomore at the time to be constantly updating those things. So when we made the, the move to Shopify, it made us all into wizards. You know, like I could go in there and say, make this red and click a button and boom, it was red. You know, it, it was so much easier. And so like, it, I, I don't know, moving forward, it was we became the web designers through a platform and that really changed the way we run business, like he said. Right. So if you were looking to get, to get into the e-commerce space, I'd become an expert at uh, a existing platform like Shopify or uh, Big Commerce so that you can like take an existing theme like what we have and walk into us and say, you know, you're doing this already really well, but I can do this, this, and this. It's above and beyond your capacity. So. I think it's a really unique thing that you guys did to say like, look, like we're not going to solve every problem. We're just going to rely on people that do it better than us. And like you did, you did that repeatedly and you've grown like a really lean business because of it. So any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Everybody give a big round of applause. This was great. This was great. This is, Hey, will you disconnect your airplay for me? What? Will you turn off the airplay for me? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah. The last thing uh, you guys get to ask the entire audience one thing that you would like them to do, whether it's sharing a Facebook post or taking a picture with your flag or ordering a t-shirt, anything. <laughs> by no, no we, we do have one ask. I mean, everybody knows at least one Texan who can be a little bit out there and obnoxious. 
Um, so for, to that text in your life, we brought some free gear. So uh, at the end, I don't know, where should I put this for them to grab stuff on the way out? I'll just put it right here. Put it right there. Sure. So on your way out, we got some flags, um, tumblers, sunglasses. Um, just give it to the Texan in your life uh, who lives in Arkansas. So that's what you can do for us. Okay. Well, you heard the man. All right. So next up, uh, we have a special guest all the way here from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, she is 16 years old, and she is, and I, I'm really glad Matt and, and Hayden actually, actually went first because it's kind of a good story of how, you know, you don't have to be that unicorn company, but you can have a great family, like lifestyle business, and you can create a really good brand and make a lot of people happy, but at the same time, you can support yourself. You can be an entrepreneur, and you can make good money doing it. Um, I think we're still setting up the, yeah, we're good. We're good. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, any other questions for Matt while we're waiting or anything? Corey, right here. I know they asked you, Corey Balkins, by the way. Uh, I know they asked you about you know startup and, and exit and all that, but to get started and to get your, your ship station, to get product and all of that, what did you do to get funding? You know, I mean, you're a college student, so you obviously, A, you don't have money, so how did you get it all together? What was the approach there? Mm -hmm. I have a question. So how did you kind of walk the line between like giving out too much product and like incentivizing people and then you know you can never give out too much product? Well, you heard the man. Yeah, so for spring break we had this idea to like give away like 15 of our flags so people could take them where, where they were going. Well, it ended up 15 turned, in, turned into 50 like super fast. Um, I had like 50 people waiting for me at Starbucks when I walked in one day. I probably made them so much money. They're probably so confused. But because um, I just told people, we'll meet you here. I didn't expect that many. There was a swarm and uh, people took it everywhere. And because of that, we've got so many followers. We have free marketing moving forward with pictures and things like that. And we sold a lot of stuff. So interesting i wonder like did you did you guys ever track like the roi on like if you give away one flag and they share it on facebook that equivocates to you know okay makes sense okay so like i said we've got a special guest caitlin hunter here from fort lauderdale uh florida father chuck in the building everybody say hey chuck <laughs> So uh, she's got a really interesting, uh, re really interesting brand, and I think she can, you know, obviously draw off these guys in the way they created a great brand. So without any further ado, uh, let's give uh, Caitlin a warm welcome. Hi, how's everyone doing today? Yeah. My name's Caitlin Hunter. I'm 16, currently a junior in high school. Um, about two years ago, I decided to transition to my natural hair, which is really, really curly. And when I transitioned, I realized that not a lot of products are made for curly hair. Like a lot of them are too damaging because whenever you have curly hair, the natural oils from your hair can't get down to the ends, which is really hard. So I realized, you know, I was making a lot of my own products, which a lot of natural people do. And I really enjoyed it. I, I've always loved science. You know, I'm in AP chem right now, I love chemistry. And I just started Googling all these different chemicals, why they were in my shampoos and conditioners, what they did. And I just really fell in love with it. I realized that's what I want to do with my life. I want to help other people, make sure we can have the healthiest hair possible. And yeah, so let me. So my brand is named Curl Love. It's geared toward natural curly textured hair but certain products will be available they will be, they'll be helpful for all kinds of texture so it can be straight wavy curly and it'll still work um the way i'm gonna get my brand out will be mostly social media as of now i mean you know i'm young a lot of my friends you know they're all on instagram they all watch youtube so that's probably how i'll get you know my name out there um Eventually, I want to have an online store just like them, but I'll also be selling in independent physical beauty stores, you know, like the Beauty Mart down the street so then I can get my product out to as many people as possible. 
Um, my product line, as of now, I only have um, four products that I use, like I let my friends use and stuff. But I want to have a sulfate-free moisturizing shampoo, clarifying condi or conditioner, deep conditioner, a leave-in, a curling cream, and a gel and hair growth pr promoting oil. Um, so my brand, there's a lot of brands out right now, you know, there's Shea Moisture, there's tons. But mine is going to stand above for two main reasons, which are the ingredients and marketing strategies. Okay, so ingredients. Whenever you go natural, a lot of girls, you know, they don't want sulfates, which strip your hair. They don't want petroleum. A lot of them want organic, vegan-friendly products. And I also won't have any filler ingredients because a lot of shampoos and conditioners, they'll have just extra stuff that they throw in. You know, it sounds nice, sounds good. You know, macadamia nut extract, that sounds, you know, awesome. So I'm going to throw it in. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm only going to put the good stuff in that actually does something for you. Um, marketing. Like I said, a lot of young people, you know, we're all really connected. We like Instagram, YouTube. Um, a, there's a lot of sites out, like Black Girl Long Hair, I think I put up. It's a really popular one. That's what I have found, and it really helped me. And they also, like, promote businesses. So like there's startup companies that they'll, you know, advertise sometimes or do articles out there for you. So, and they have a lot of, you know, site activity. So that's where I would go. Certain YouTube stars, Natural 85, Smartista Beauties, you know, millions of fo um, followers, subscribers, and they also review certain products that aren't as big yet, you know, so they help expand other smaller companies. And that's the end of my presentation. So okay, everybody give a round of applause. And I want I want I want everybody to remember when they were 16 how much guts it takes to do this type of thing. I'm serious. There's no way I could have done it. Um, so I, I have a question to kind of start and then we'll, we'll kind of open it up. So uh, I think it and this is from I remember uh, Iana said this. I, I want to say it was like in 2010. Uh, ethnic women spent 80% more on cosmetics, but had like 20% of the relative shelf space for cosmetics in stores. Now that's, that's cosmetics in general. Can you talk about, uh, specific to curly hairs, uh, is it the same type of thing? Is there kind of an underserved market there? And that's kind of why you're, you're thinking that this is a good niche to go into? It is. Part of why I want to do this. Ooh. Part of why I want to do this is because right now the market is so small. If I get in now, you know, eventually I can be as big as Pantene, you know, but there, if you go to Walmart, you know, they have the hair section, you'll find a section about this big for curly hair products. And then, you know, you'll have rows and rows for straight hair friendly products, which, you know, that is, there is a large group of people that have straight hair, but there's also a pretty big group out there for curly haired people. So I really want to cater to them because I know for me, it was really difficult finding a brand I liked, one that I felt worked. So that's why I want to do this. Uh, and congratulations so much. I, I want to reiterate uh, 16. Wow. You know, so uh, you. Uh, qu uh, a quick question for you uh, and just maybe a, a thought or two here. So, so is this something that you have the ability to um, produce a lot of today or is this still kind of in the idea stages where you need to figure out production and figure out marketing and, you know, all those pieces and put them together? It is. As of now, I do have some suppliers that I really like. I like to buy in bulk and then I make them. But as of now, you know, I'm just really giving them to my friends. I usually don't make them pay. But if like one of my friends, Tiami, she buys constantly. So I do make her pay a little bit, but she's like my best friend. So I'm not going to make her pay too much. Um, I'm not, you know, patent or anything. I haven't been approved by the FDA or yeah, FDA. Is that what it's? Yes. Okay, so I don't want to, I can't put it out now like on stores, but hopefully by, you know, 2018, I'll be a freshman in college, I think. So hopefully by then I'll be able to sell on st shelves and stuff. Okay, great. And, and uh, is this a family business? So is dad involved in this or is this solo or what? Um, no. I mean, if it takes off, I might buy him like a nice house or something, but <laughs> he's not. 
<laughs> yeah. Might buy him a house? Come on, Chuck. You got to lean on, on that. Congratulations. Um, one of the questions I have is how often are you sitting down with your friends and asking about how the product is working from them and getting testimonials and getting feedback? I mean, do you, are you capturing pictures or what are you doing? Because that is your marketing. Is your friends using that product is your marketing, right? Right, I do. Like like I said, my friend Tiana, I see her almost every weekend. So I do talk to her a lot about it when my friends Jade. Um, they're on Instagram. I have a lot of pictures from them that they post. I have a lot of pictures on my phone from when I do my hair, and it looks really nice. But I don't. I didn't put any in the slides. That's what I was telling my dad. I probably should have put some, you know, so you guys could see. Um, I was thinking about making an Instagram page, so then you know, get my name out there more. People can see, you know, how the product works, what it might look like for them if they used it. So I do have to work on that. But yeah. Okay. If you could get any celebrity icon whether it's business or entertainment to be using your product and who would it be i would probably pick solange knowles because that's beyonce's sister oh, because yes. i really like her and she also went natural you know a couple years ago she has a pretty big fan base so that's probably who i'd pick so this isn't her ask but i'm gonna ask this if you've got a twitter tag her i think your handles are right here is this your is this your twitter handle no, that's a famous YouTube. Oh, oh. So if you want, I would say tweet at her, right? We could tweet at her. But anyways, so now now I'll kind of open it up to you. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want these people to help you with? If it's sharing something, whatever you can ask them to do, you know, the floor is yours. Um, I'd say give me, you know, criticism, give me ideas on how to make my business better. Um, that's really what I need right now. Um eventually I'll need investors, but I don't think I'm ready for that. But yeah, I think criticism right now, asking me questions, that's really helpful. So, yeah. Okay. Well, good. Everybody give her a big round of applause. This was really cool. <laughs> so, that was, that was you know, I, I honestly, like, had not seen or heard any of that, and I am blown away. Uh, she is the first person, I think, to ever ask, stand up here and ask for criticism, and she's 16 years old. So, I just want that to sink in for a second, that I've never heard anyone ask for that. So, um, guys, this was really good. I really, really appreciate all of you coming out and asking the good questions and uh, being supportive. We've got two, you know, really great entrepreneurs here, and I'm really excited to see where both of you guys go. Um, so... Thank you so much. Enjoy stay or stay drink coffee uh, network. Um, but you know you guys have a great Wednesday. Okay, take care.